Hello game devs. We're going to talk about the Corgi engine today. We're going to get started. This is a great platformer um, tool. It does a lot of the things that you're going to end up reprogramming anyway. Um, and it is a really easy way to get uh, to get going with um, uh, with Unity. Uh, and it is it um, is pretty customizable. And there's also a lot of um, uh, integrations. We're going to later be using dialogue system, which is a very generic term for like a quest tree system, which Corgi doesn't really have in it. Um, so uh, they they've done a lot of work in integrating their their system into other uh, other uh, software into other software that's on Unity's site. So I it's very uh, I highly recommend it. It is really fun to use, um, and there's a lot of different things, including like multiplayer uh, couch co op multiplayer support. Just a lot of things that just really make your day easier and allow you to start making games instead of making code. Um, there are 3D and 2D. We're going to be sticking in the 2D section. Um, but uh, a lot of companies use it, um, and it is a pretty good tool. Uh, certainly, you know, as uh, someone who's developed, um, you know, over a dozen side scrollers professionally, um, I, I can tell you that this tool does a lot of great. Uh, it does a lot of great work um, and it's not physics based, um, which is really important just in general, especially if you're working on, um, you know, that kind of 2D side scroller feel, which, you know, for me it is definitely how it works. So uh, I have already downloaded uh, um, and imported the Corgi engine uh, in here. You're going to see uh, a folder. Oh, let me close that out. Uh, you're you're going to see a folder um, and in it there is common demos and third party uh it looks like there's this how to install the corgi engine so please follow the new steps go to the asset store on the import you'll get er errors referencing cinema machine and post-processing that's normal don't panic uh at the root there's a file called manifest copy your uh it into your projects packages folder at the top of level uh, same as your assets library replacing the one that's already there and that's it so let's go to the corgi engine it's actually right here, so we can navigate it, show an explorer. And uh, where are we putting this? We're putting this at the root uh, um, uh, on import. Projects packages folder at the top level, same as assets library, etc. OK, so uh, we're going to take this, and then we're going to go to assets, Corgi My Game. and put it right here, it looks like, is what they're saying to do. Copy it to project packages folder at the top. Oh, into the packages folder. Oops. Dumb. So we're going to go into packages, and there's the manifest. There you go. We're going to replace that file. All right. So a very important thing to do. Uh, it's in doing some stuff. It's thinking about it. All right. So now that we have that package, uh, that um, manifest set up, it will work. It's real important to read the readmes. That's why it's in capitals. Um, so inside of the folder, uh, we got common, we got demos, and third party. Third party. Uh, you know, you don't have to worry about too much. Demos. This is where all the projects are that they have. Um, they have Corgi 2D, 3D, Minimal, that's where we're going to go in a second, Pixel, Retro, um, Super Hipster Bros. This is basically a Mario 1-1 clone. Uh, as you know, uh, your uh, assignment is to create a level 1-1 world. Assume this folder is kind of like the back of your textbook uh, homework uh, assignment, okay? So assume that this is the thing that you're um, not going to look at except as reference in order to understand how to process through the, the practice problem, uh, which is to create Mario 1.1. So we're not going to open up that one right now. Um, but there is a lot of fantastic uh, uh, opportunities here to play uh, a lot of different demos. Um, the one that we're going to want to focus on um, is the minimal level, and we'll use minimal level to then examine the way they have organized things. So if we go into minimal, um, we have actually several different scenes in here. 
Um, each one is like minimal flight, minimal level. That's the one that we're going to hit up, minimal level. Um, and in fact, I've actually already opened it here, uh, as you can see. Um, there's also Pixel Perfect. There's uh, some other things in here. So this is a great folder. Uh, in each of the folders is a prefab folder that has all of the items that they created, um, including the artwork and stuff that's usually stuck in here. Um, uh, and so, uh, you know, all of these prefabs, they're using the common set of code, but they're being created in a unique way. So just like you, you're going to be uh, just uh, this is the same way you're going to be making your game. You're going to make a folder and build it up from scratch. So if we take a look, this is uh, um, the minimal level. If we oops. So it looks like uh, I've got a package error. I'm going to um, go to package manager and go to 2D pixel perfect. It looks like that's what's going on. Uh, hit update to 204. Hopefully that'll work. I'm not sure exactly what that's going to do. That might have just messed up everything else in the Corgi engine, but we're going to find out. Oh, looks like uh, at least it's deprecated. So I don't know. I think I'm sa I saved myself. So we're going to hit play. Uh, and in the minimal level, we can see ourselves a minimal level. Look, oh, that's such a cute little cute square. Oh, it looks up if I press up. We can uh, observe here. This is the camera point that's moving around. Um, our focus point. You can jump here. If I select this character, this rectangle, it's got a couple things going on in here. Oh, it's got jetpacks. Uh, we've got ourselves the sprite renderer. Again, that same animation uh, um, artwork, same as always. The animator, the thing that's controlling it, which is the rectangle animator. Let's open that up. Look at this. So this is kind of one of the cool things about Corgi is the animator is already set up. And you can ignore all these checkboxes, but basically this is the code telling it what animation it's being. So if I um, I'm, if I'm in this, let's see, if I'm in the game, and then I uh, resume, and I hit down, or I hit jump, look, jump and fall pops up automatically. So looking up allows us to do that. So each one is conditional and different. So all you have to do is name things the correct thing and then add the animation to the correct spot. You could even use this character controller and just drag and drop. I would rename it maybe. Uh, it's usually a good idea. Uh, but you can put all your animations into a character controller, make it look totally different. Um, uh, so in this, uh, in this level, uh, we've got our character. Um, uh, let's see. So we've got our rectangle, um, that sprite render, that animator here, which is really cool. Rigid body 2D. So that's like a uh, um, collision, but two dimensional. Uh, Corgi controller. And uh, it has a lot of data in here. Um, and uh, character level bounds and character. Um, so this just says when you're outside the level bounds, kill it. Uh, but then if you keep scrolling down, there's a ton more. There's horizontal movement, dash, all the different abilities the player can do. So we're going to build ourselves a, a new character control or a new prefab. Uh, so we're going to go into uh, our scene and we are going to, I don't think I have a prefabs folder yet in this uh, scene. So we're going to create a new uh, folder, underscore prefabs. And this is again at the top level. Um, and uh, we're going to create in the scene component our game object create empty. We're just going to do this totally from scratch. So uh, first thing we want to do is add a sprite renderer. Sprite renderer. Uh, I just type in sprite if uh, it says uh, bring it up. Um, so we know that it has some artwork. Uh, I'm also going to give it some artwork just because I, I hate things being blank. Um, we have this texture. We've got P1 front. Maybe we will just use that. All right. So now we have a character art. So now that we have that character art, let's add another component. Corgi controller. All right. So this is going to add uh, a box collider automatically. Uh, that's why I didn't add it first. The Corgi controller will add a bunch of stuff. 
Um, and then it's got, uh, uh, if we look through here, we've got default parameters, gravity, fall multiplier, ascent multiplier. So if you go faster up speed, your max velocity, X and Y. So like you could go faster left than up. Uh, there's acceleration slopes. What is the maximum slope that you'd allow a player to walk up versus a wall? Like that's the important thing to know. Um, uh, this is experimental physics, 2d stuff collisions um there might be platform masks that kind of thing these are not too important right now uh ray casting this is the number of uh whiskers that a game uh might have uh a, a whisker that a character might have the more uh they have the more processor intensive it is but then also the tighter the controls can feel stickiness stickiness to slopes so um the other thing we need to do is go to the uh tag and layer and go to tag and check player and layer player. Look at all these other layers. There's tons of stuff in there um, that we'll unlock later on. Uh, and then we're going to rename it our minimal player. And we can make this a prefab. I'm going to drag it into the prefabs folder so that we uh, don't lose it. And let's go back here. Um, the other thing we need here, in, in the, uh, other than the Corgi controller, we are going to uh, add ourselves a, a character. And this character has this button called Auto Build Player Character. I'm just going to hit that. Uh, it's going to do a lot of the work for us. And then we are going to um, uh, uh, go to Overrides and apply all to our prefab so that it goes up to our prefab as well. Um, this is going to automatically set our platform masks and make sure that our layers are set properly. Um, it does a lot of stuff for us. The other thing it does for us that I want to point out is it adds all of these items, these character. These are abilities. Uh, I suggest you go through them one at a time, maybe look at see which ones you want, which ones you don't. Each one is connected to an animation and, you know, there's a lot of uh, stuff here. Uh, that we're not going to go into specifically. Uh, but now that we have this pre prefab set up, we're going to go to our level manager and we are going to drag this prefab into the level manager and it says our minimal player character. Um, and then, uh, you know, we want to make sure that uh, the character is deleted from the scene. Otherwise, it's going to be added twice. Um, now, the other components of this scene is the level. Uh, and the, so there's a couple of things. There's the level manager. Uh, every single uh, uh, scene needs a level manager in Corgi project. So you just create an empty game manager, set it, uh, this position set at X negative 100 for some reason, but uh, whatever. Um, the level manager here, it tells you what player you want to spawn in. Uh, it adds checkpoints. Um, it sets up checkpoint systems, points of entry if you have different like zoning and areas. Um, there's also fade in and out if you wanted to do that kind of stuff at the beginning instead of just like quick snap. Um, and in the level um, are platforms. Now these platforms are just basically artwork with a box collider on it. Any box collider will do, any artwork will do. Doesn't matter what it is, you can make your own right away, move it around. As long as it has a box collider, 2D, it will collide. And there's two kinds, There's uh, so make sure it's the 2D version. Um, the third thing is the level start. Um, uh, this is, you need one in every scene, you know, drag it in. Uh, there's a there's a prefab, uh, just drag in the, the level start prefab for that. Uh, so once we press play, um, we are going to see our character in all of its non-animated glory. And we move back and forth, we can jump and we can look up even though the mechanic the mechanic of looking up works, but um, nothing else does this in terms of artwork. So, you know, there's still a lot more to hook up, but this is kind of our uh, Corgi minimum scene, the character and how to play with abilities and how to add stuff. And I'm going to rename the seam, uh, or I'm going to save the seam as Corgi00. Uh, this is just so the, you know, it's the first test that I'm going to be doing. Um, and it looks like I'm having trouble with my... Uh, uh, so every level uh, is going to need a level start. Uh, the level start, you just drag it in, but it's a checkpoint. Um, this has the checkpoint script in here and which facing direction it is. 
Uh, so other ones of these, you can, there's, there's another prefab for checkpoints as well, but you can just set them up. Um, it set, allows you to do a lot of work, um, really quickly, um, uh, and can get you going. So it's why I love, uh, the, the Corgi engine. Um, it, it's just a tool that can get you, uh, going quickly. It's just a tool that can really, uh, get, uh, the creative juices flowing. So with that, I will see you in class. <laughs>